It's the morning rodeo with with uh, um, Hot Dog and, and Jimmy. We are broadcasting from various locations, and it's going to be a hot one today. The dog days of summer are coming up, and that's why they call him the Hot Dog. He's the Hot Dog. I'm Jimmy. Hot Dog, how did you get your name, Hot Dog? Uh, this is a family show. Let's not go there. Uh, cue it. Oh, God. <laughs> Where the fuck is it? There it is. Jimmy's not a professional. I like the hot dog. Here we are, back again in digital form. Finding a time that actually works for us this time. We tried, I think, what three times. We we struck out three times last week. Yeah, uh, some might say that that should dictate the that we walk off uh, and go back to the dugout. But here we are. We're still swinging. Uh, we, we're going to make this game go on forever. We're swinging like an old folks down in uh, Florida. Get it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the yeah. Anyways. That's why VD is rampant down there. <laughs> um, Rob, I, let, let's talk, let's talk beer here. So I sent you a picture of mine. I don't know if you looked at it, but that's okay if you didn't. Uh, enjoying Mobcraft's Crush Orange Creamsicle. It is a smoothie style beer with lactose, orange, tangerine, and vanilla from Mobcraft in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Six percent ABV, zero on the IBUs. It looks like straight up orange juice. Um, it uh, it definitely had like, um, uh, you you can get the the orange taste to it, the tangerine, if you will. Yours looks like uh, kind of grapefruit. We'll talk about that in a second. But uh, um, it had the vanilla on it. The vanilla wasn't like too too strong. The orange, it, it was a good balance, and it tasted like, you know, you know, a creamsicle, orange creamsicle is a lot different than just an orange, like an orange soda, or if you have that orange creamsicle taste, you know what I mean? They're like, they're, it's a distinct taste. Oh, um, very different. We should, we should, we should uh, qu- qu- uh, quantify or qualify, or there's a word that means uh, something about telling the audience that you drank this beer earlier, yes? I did. Um, uh because uh, you, you're you, you're talking about it as if you drank it already and you never really let him in on that secret. I was gonna. We'll get to that. Um, yeah, it's gone. Past tense. I I consumed it. Um, it, it, it it's, I'm just letting you know. I didn't I didn't know that until you did your intro uh, or you're talking about it. And I'm going. This, he drank it already. I bet you. you know, and we, we we talked about it. I just forgot because my brain is dying. But. All right, continue. Um, yeah, so it had the it didn't like have like the distinct taste of an orange creamsicle, but it definitely wasn't like too far away from it. But it was also not like an orange beer, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. It had yeah, it makes a lot, it makes a lot of sense. You're very eloquent. Had a had it had a tartness to it. Um, it was uh, it was enjoyable. It was good. Uh, you could definitely crush a couple of them. Probably not more than two, though, because that maybe too much sugar, too much lactose, I make mean, your tummy yeah. poop. You don't. You don't want to even eat two two orange creamsicles, let alone drink two orange right. creamsicle beers. I've been on a, a creamsicle orange creamsicle kick, though. Um, you know, so with my life and all the adjustments I'm trying to make, um, I've replaced soda with bubbly. You know the the flavored seltzer, zero calories. Um, they're pretty good. I get the orange creamsicle kind of lot and it's, it's pretty good. I can, I can crush those all day. Uh, I like them. And then even like the energy stuff that I drink, that's like supposed to be healthy for you is it comes in a little container canister, orange creamsicle, 
also very good. So I'm I'm on this kick of the orange cream variety. Just, you know, make sure you don't play around too much with that stuff. It's dangerous. Orange cream could be like my, you know, my retirement name in Florida because that's where the oranges grow. And if I'm a swinger, you best know I'm creaming. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rob, you got a beer from Malibu Brewing Company, correct? I do indeed. Tell us. Am about I it. supposed to talk now? If you want, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Timing's a little off, I guess today. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I have the uh, the Canyon Rose Lager from uh, Malibu Brewing Company. Uh, the information I have here is infused with breezy hibis- hibiscus and cranberry. Canyon is a beautifully dry and mildly floral. Uh, let me take that again. Can we edit this? Can we go? We'll run it back. You sound- Canyon is. Go. Okay. Uh, Canyon. <laughs> All right. I'm going to speak now. Canyon is beautifully dry and mildly floral with a touch of tartness. Crafted for wine and beer enthusiasts alike, celebrate with our rosé lager at brunch or bask in a Malibu sunset. Uh, yeah, it says effervescent, I think. Yes. Cool. Effervescent. Fancy word. 4.2 ABV, yeah. zero on the IBU. You showed it to me. It looks. It definitely looks like it's uh, It looks like grapefruit juice, almost. Rosé. No, it it's, not, it's, it's not that dark. It, it looks more like um, it's a little salmon color. Mm-hmm. It's very uh, translucent. You really, um, you really um, pronounce the L in salmon, huh? Salmon? Yeah. I think. Uh, Why should I not? I don't know. I just think that's unusual in Wisconsin. I think most people just say salmon. Oh well, I'm in I'm in uh, uh, yeah, California right. now, so that's right. You're more sophisticated, better looking. You know, your face I, looks I, thinner. I, you know, well, I've been uh, I've been cutting out the smoothies in the morning. You know, I've the one one the one one uh, with healthy vitamins? part of my diet. What's that? The smoothie with no vitamins? vitamins. Yeah, I t- no vi- I, I I got rid of the vitamins too. If I went in there, can I just get the whey and vitamins, please? Yep. <laughs> they would look at me funny, I think. Damn. Um, they'd say CVS is down the street. But yeah, your your beard looks good. I don't know if I've ever had the rosé before, like wine. Uh, I've, I've never had a rosé lager. Yeah, I know no, that. Never, never had that. Is it good? And this, uh, I will say this. I was at Malibu Brewing Company yesterday. They gave this to me for free. Awesome. Uh, because I mentioned that I was going to do, I have two beers from them. So next week I'll do the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, I paid for that one. Uh, but they, they gave me this one. And so if you're going to do it on a podcast, here's another one. That's killer. Uh, very nice. Yeah. It's a very cool little brewery. I think it's kind of new. I think they should have called it Mallet Brewery. That's, but, yeah, that's uh, a good idea. <laughs> I think they missed uh, they missed an opportunity. People love a mashup these days. They love the words to be part of one another. They could they could uh, um, make a beer called the Malibu. They they could yeah. I mean they they're they've got options over there. Lots of different things, but they don't have but they don't have writers. Well, it sounds so like a lot of people don't. Brew. But yeah, take a sip. Is it good? Um, I mean, I'm not smelling any of the floral stuff. Uh, it smelled like I'm getting mostly that lager smell. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little bit, a uh, hint. Ooh, that's it's crisp. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely got like a wine feel to it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like got the that um, it's like uh, I don't want to say acidic, but you know what that that feeling is when you get that on the back end. Mm-hmm. Um, I can taste uh, uh, the floral, like the rosé part of it. Um, and then like the lager kind of comes through, but it's not over. Neither one overpowers the other one on yeah. the first sip. It, it's uh, there. It's a pretty well balanced uh, uh, beer. It's actually pretty good. Excellent. Excellent. A couple things that we, we should address. Um, yes. I drank my beer already um, because and it, it was explained a little bit briefly 
um, on the last little mini sode. Um, I am now. Oh, I don't listen to the show. That's why I don't know that. All right. I'm now giving, um, we're pulling back the curtain. Um, I'm giving intermittent fasting an opportunity, a real opportunity. Now I've done before in the past where it's like, this was, this was my mentality back then was, oh, I'm just, I'm not going to eat for 16 hours. And then that eight hour window, I'm shoving my face with everything greasy that I possibly can, but I skip breakfast. So that makes it okay. You know what I mean? Um, and then I would put like creamer in my coffee in the morning. So it really wasn't even intermittent fasting. Now I am on the 16 hour fasting window. I eat from 11 to seven or earlier. Sometimes I, I stop eating earlier, you know, and then I can start the clock. But uh, um, I can only drink. I only drink black coffee in the mornings and water. That's just that's just what I have at 11 o'clock. I try to eat something healthy. I'm still on the plant base ish diet. I still have eggs. Sometimes I'll have cheese. Rarely I'll have yogurt sometimes, but given this a real try, I've started it last week. I think collectively I'm down like four, three or four pounds on top of intermittent fasting. I'm going to the gym every day. Still I'm running frequently. If I'm not going to the gym, I'm running. Um, I'm exercising four to a, uh, three to four times a week. So I'm, I'm trying to really do it and be healthier and get into a, a habit and ritual that I can sustain and that can, for the long term. Trying to make a lifestyle change. This isn't a diet. I need to make a lifestyle change. That's what it's called. Um, so then I can find, uh, so I can somehow uh, attain the body that I crave to have. Um, you know, it, who knows when, if, if, and when I'll get there. Um, so I'm taking it seriously. So we usually record seven or eight o'clock my time. And that's, uh, during my fasting period because I don't want to, because especially when I like go back to work, it's going to be difficult. Like if I, if I made the time like one to nine so I can drink beer on the podcast, well, I don't even know if my lunch break is going to be at one o'clock. You know what I mean? So it's like, I, it's going to be between that 11 you know, around 11 o'clock regardless. So I, I kind of have to stick to that just to maintain my sanity. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to improve myself. I'm trying to live longer, progress my life so I can do the things that I enjoy, such as podcasting with my, one of my best friends, Robert, uh, enjoy walks with my family, going to the swimming pool, enjoying time with my wife, because I get to do that now and I want to continue it because I love it so much. All the great things in my life. Uh, yeah. yeah. I was... But I will say this. It's, it sounds terrible. <laughs> uh, not not the great things in your life, but whatever this fasting uh, plant based with sometimes yogurt diet uh, <laughs> thing you got going on. Um, Do I look skinny? I, it's. You look amazing, uh, but I, I'll tell you that till 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 the day you die before me. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, you know, it's uh, it's just it's interesting to me because uh, like uh, I think about none of that, and I I have none of those issues, and, and so I'm I have a, a lifestyle that I, I take for granted. I mm. think maybe and, uh, it's it, yeah, it is what it is what it is. I guess I, I don't know how to. Uh, I, I hope this all works out for you. It, but it, it sounds like uh, terrible. Yeah. One one person has made a comment about my weight. Actually, three three people have made a comment about my weight in the last week. Mm -hmm. About how good it is. Mm hmm. Hell yeah, man! That's payoff. That's uh, that's tangible, <laughs> verbal. Yeah, one of them was uh, my I mother. Guess. Is that what you said? Yeah, I said I guess. Yeah, no, you know, you know that that happened. Unless, you know, it's like, uh, you don't have to guess. Somebody told you, man. Yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta keep doing it. Um, you know, I was uh, yesterday on my run, <laughs> you know, usually I try to like zone out and, uh, and I think about things when I run while the music is playing. But, uh, yesterday I was thinking like, I can't, I can't stop this. I have to keep going. I, I can't, you know, because, 
I've, I've been here so many times and it just gets to the point where then I stop and then I get back to where I, where I'm really unhappy with the way I look. Um, I just, I can't, I got to keep going. If anything, you know, for just to say I did it, I guess, I don't know. So I got to keep finding motivators. I, I, you know, I, I think I have found like one of my superpowers too. I'm pretty good at looking at myself in the mirror and guessing my weight. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm usually pretty, pretty close. Like I can look and I'd be like, yeah, I think I gained a pound or two. And then sure enough, I did. Or then I can be like, yeah, I think I'm, I'm probably around this. And then, yeah, I'm, I'm usually pretty, pretty close. I could be one of those guys at like the fair or six flags. Remember that where they, where it's people pay a person money to be like, guess how much I weigh or guess my age. And it's like, if you're within like five pounds uh, of it, you lose. But then, so <laughs> you have this person potentially willing to insult you to say you look yeah, like. Yeah, that's a game. Of, uh, like, that's a, a superpower and a game that just breeds loathing. Self-loathing, loathing <laughs> for the person. Yeah, but people, seem, uh, uh, people, well, the, the game at Six Flags is they look at you, the guy looks at you or the person looks at you and says this, this, you weigh this much. And then you have to step on the scale to, to prove your weight and mm-hmm. and then it's like well, if they're right on and you're and then that could be like your first realization it's like oh shit i do weigh this much you know <laughs> or, or it could be like yeah i lost i lost weight but i just feel like i or feel they like could, they could throw like a really high number out there and, and be over by 50 pounds and then like when you're like oh you're over by 50 pounds and they're like well come back next yeah <laughs> yeah it's like uh and like, then just add insult to injury and and uh just uh, uh, crushing whatever right well uh, then it's like if they guess 50 pounds over then it's like wait a minute is that what i look like exactly that's what I'm, yeah it's uh it's a lose-lose game i don't i don't <laughs> see any uh my dad my dad did that game one time when we went to six flags he he paid a person to guess his weight and i think he was I think the guy was wrong, and, and my dad got a prize. And then you get a prize, be like, "Congratulations! You don't, you don't look as big as I thought you did." Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's congratulations. You're either more or less disgusting than I thought. <laughs> Here's a corn dog. Your free <laughs> yeah, corn dog is your prize. <laughs> they throw it. They throw it down the <laughs> down the walkway, and they go, "Go get it. Go fetch." And then you just see somebody like eating the corn dog with tears running down their face, and you know. But you got to eat the corn dog; it's, it's free food. You can't, you can't yeah, waste it. it. Yeah, corn dogs don't go bad. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so that is that is what I'm trying to do, um, and I'm also trying to shift my perspective a little bit and trying to be more positive with how I think. We'll see. We'll see. Um, I think that's a good one. I think that that one will, uh, um, did, did we, uh, uh, do you know about that water study? That water study? Mm-mm. God, I wish I, uh, I, it's like Dr. Ishimoto Yama or something like that. Yeah. Mr. Roboto. Did a study. What's, is that what it is? No. You were saying like Domo Regato or something like that? Oh yeah. So, I mean, we can, we can use that as a placeholder. Okay. Uh, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he did this study on water that is like, you know, you take the same water from a pitcher and like distilled or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, pour half of it into a, a, a container and, and yell negative things at that container. Okay. And bombard it with negative energy. Yeah. And you freeze it. And then you look at the crystals and stuff that it forms under a microscope and they've got like these black rings and, and uh, they, they look, uh, they don't look like you know, just water or whatever. And then they do the same thing with the other half of the water they put in a jar and they yell positive things that are talk positively to it. And it makes these like crazy, uh, when they went, then they freeze it and look at it under a microscope and it makes like these very ornate crystal form formations that are completely different to, Hmm. uh, to the the ones that, uh, you, to the other ones. And then I'm sure anybody like that's, uh, uh, heard of this or whatever. So then you look at how, what we're made up of 75% water. Uh, and, and if water has memory and you're talking to yourself negatively all the time, it, it holds on to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's, 
it helps the brain. It helps the body to just be positive, at least sometimes, you know, uh, try and be, try and get back down to neutral at least. Yeah. The only time you really, you know, don't want to be positive if, is if you're taking like a STD test. Yeah. Yep. I mean, some of them are treatable and at least then some <laughs> the doctor knows that, the doctor knows that you've got, you know, you had a good night. <laughs> Yeah, it's just gonna burn for a little bit. It'll go away. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you know, here's here's the pills and congratulations. <laughs> you think you think a doctor's ever said that? <laughs> God, I, you know, there's got to be doctors out there that want to be. They want they they were they were steered into it because of their families or their last names. Uh, uh, but yeah. man, they just wanted to be on stage crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> and they use they, they use their profession to to hammer out their type five. So what what are some things that I should say to myself? Should I should I recite positive affirmations to myself in the morning, looking at myself in the mirror? What 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 should they be? Well, I mean, I don't know if you have to recite them out loud as much as just think, like uh, uh, you know, and and you know, you can start, you, you know, maybe get to the point where you where you're saying you're you're a beautiful person, mm-hmm. you look good today, but start off with like you know, uh, you look all right, yeah, okay, fine, mediocre, it's fine. Uh, yeah, you're getting there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, uh, you know, it's, it's whatever you need to hear, you know, today's going to be a good day. I'm going to crush it. Uh, I've yesterday, like whatever you, it, it can be past tense, future tense. Uh, just, you know, it's gotta, it's gotta be a real, eventually it becomes more real. Like I know I tried this. I had post-its up all over my apartment back in Wisconsin. Um, most of them were more questions than positive remarks mm-hmm. um the meaning of you know and it's like yeah like what 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 is what does today mean to you mm-hmm. uh stuff like that you know where it's like uh and then i would have to answer and it's like you're you're kind of like to go like uh today means uh another shit day at the, at the factory where where life sucks and i don't want to be here uh that's not a good answer mm-hmm um, but that was where I went wrong with the post-its. You're not supposed to leave it open-ended. <laughs> you know, you want to you want to have the uh, uh, you want to go positive right away. So did you put them in like places uh, that you forgot you put them in? So like that one time where you go to the cupboard to get the the specific type of pot. Oh, there it is. There's the question, and it says like, uh, "Oh, you're really gonna try to cook or something like that." Uh, no, like uh, I, I I had them all over the place. So it's like uh, uh, you know, on the mirror, it'd be like, "Good job washing your hands." On the on the toilet, it'd be like uh, your aim is really good today. Um, you know, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's uh, uh, it can be anything like that. I mean, I, if you can if you can kill it at the toilet, like no splatter, that's a yeah. fucking win, and you should take you should you know, give yourself props for that. Right. And then what, there's, like, what do you do? There's an art to, to no splash paint, you know? What do you do when somebody comes over? You, you get, you get a girl over at your apartment and then all of a sudden she's just like looking, she's like, what, what's all these post-it notes? She looks at one in the ceiling and it says like, you did it or something like that. Uh, well, the one on the ceiling wouldn't be for that. That one said, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and that was for her specifically. <laughs> yeah <laughs> my friends don't call me casanova yeah yeah uh, uh but uh, uh i had somebody that came over and mentioned that stuff because they were like i said there were a lot of questions and and uh they were they were questions that were like you know um some of them existential some of them you know just just whatever and they were like what's this all about and i go ah it's just a good way like that was a way that i like to start uh, my day was kind of like, uh, what, you know, like it gets you thinking about what you want out of out of all the days, but especially that day, and and how you want to be. The problem with the questions is is if you're in a bad place, you can go very negative with them as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I, you know, the the postage thing doesn't. I don't think it works. Uh, I was willing to give it a shot. Yeah. I also had a little a little chart, a little graph of. of smiley faces to frown faces and i was like where do you want to be today um and you always want to be happy right so like uh, at least you, you point at that one and you go that's where i'm going to be today yeah and then it's negative 20 outside and you instantly go to the other end of the spectrum or something. i mean one, one of mine could be like 
No, it's not getting bigger. Your stomach's getting smaller. See, but you're already, you're going, <laughs> you're, you're, you know, uh, that's negative. I mean, like I said, you can go, go meet, you know, get, get to neutral. That's neutral. You're giving and taking at the same time. Sure. Sure. Uh, I think, I know. think I could get there. I think uh, I'll make an effort you to could, do you it. You could go, your stomach's getting smaller and maybe it's getting bigger. I don't know. It doesn't need to be though. It's fine. We're good. That's good. Ne- yeah. Neutral. That's, well, see, there you go. You've already started. The journey has <laughs> begun. It is enough. I am it enough. Is enough. There, yeah, there you go. You can you can really go as cheesy as you want with it. Uh, but I do think that like eventually um, it does start to work out. Like when I like, came out, honestly, it was even before I came out here, like uh, when I was hanging out with certain people and, and um, getting some feedback, I guess, in a way that, that I didn't feel like it was lies, uh, which is what I always used to tell myself back in the day. Like, Oh, if the, the people that say they like hanging out with you are lying to you. Uh, and they're, um, they're, they're going to use whatever, inf- whatever you do when you hang out with them, they're going to make fun of you about it behind your back later. That's what they get out of this relationship. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, uh, that's a terrible way to go through life because every time you hang out with people, you're on, eggshells in your own mind about um what like how how can you be made fun of for uh, if you say this or do this okay this way this way this way this way too many ways don't do that thing try and keep it neutral try and keep it you know uh try and keep it to the point where it's like oh you there's nothing they can they can't squeeze any any more lemon out of this or any more juice out of this lemon mm-hmm. uh uh and, and even if they do, it'll be sour. I'm not going to give them an orange, you know, like to fucking make their juice out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, eventually, I, I think I was hanging out with like Noah and, and stuff like that. That started the journey and me going like, actually, I think I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm good. I think that things are, you know, it's like, and then that little germ, that little thought where I was like, oh, I think actually these people like me. Like it, 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 it's infectious in a good way. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, but, you know, when I got out here, I was able to kind of uh, rest on my laurels or my heels, whatever that's saying, and, and relax a little bit. Right. Nice. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, there's going to be days. I mean, there was moments this last weekend where I we went to somebody's house. We've never been. I've never been to that house before. House was amazing. And I was just like, fuck, what am I doing wrong? You know, so there's going to be times where I do it. But, uh, you know, my, my legs look nice. I guess. There you go. There you, yeah. I did my fastest five mile run yesterday. Ever. Average yeah. average pace of eight minute twelve seconds per mile. It's pretty good. It's freaking awesome. My split. That's really good. You, you know, from what I know about five mile runs averages, uh, that sounds low. You want it to be low, right? Yeah, low. Yeah. yeah. Um, my, well, my first I'm still mile, working on that first one. Uh-huh. I, I think I'm at, uh, 18 years. Well, I when got... I finished, I'll still be my fastest. <laughs> I got, well, so like my first mile and I, I kind of like the way this worked out and I'm going to try to do it this way. But my first mile was like a lot slower. It was like eight twenty five. but it's also, I just woken up. I was just kind of like getting, you know, getting the rust off a little bit, but then my last two miles, um, and they went down every mile was faster, which was awesome. So the last, the last mile I did mile five, I think it was like eight minutes and two seconds. It only took me to get to that point. So, um, yeah, that's pretty, that's kind of, it's kind of what you want. I mean, realistically, I think I'd, I'd prefer like a more consistent, um, I don't think so. I think, uh, I think you're better off going with starting with a slow mile and then bringing it down and, and making up for it because especially if you're just waking up and running, you have to warm up your muscles and stuff. You, you like, right. Well, like long term, uh, if you if you do like uh, eventually, so I've I've ran eight half marathons in my life. I want to do at least two more to get to an even ten. So I got to get up to those higher distances. The longest distance I've done this year is only six. Um, but I want I gotta like learn to keep you know maintain a pace for a long time for like a five mile j- sprint. You know, run. It's like I can s- keep it slow. One mile, one and two. And then maybe mile three, four through um, eight, it's faster, but it's also like consistent. And then eight, 
you know, eight through 13 or whatever, something else. I don't know. I, I started following people on Instagram that run a lot. Um, there's this one lady, uh, I forget what her name is, but she's a pretty, uh, positive, uh, a person. And it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. She's, um, she, she makes these shirts called promoting obesity, uh, Kelly, Kelly Roberts. And, uh, you know, she's a, I guess you could say she's a, a bigger person, but she runs marathons and she's a running coach and she's like really body positive. And I was like, yeah, I, and I, I wish I could do this and maybe I can, I need your help though, Rob. I need you to guide me through positivity. That's what this podcast I think is about. And I think that's what it's always been about. And we never knew because yeah. you, you asked me a couple of weeks ago, like, what are we doing with it? What is this podcast? What it's about? And, uh, um, I was asking him, what is this podcast to you? Uh, no. because I know what it is to me. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's like, that's, that is an important question to answer. And if that's what it is, I'm glad for it. I, and I feel like the strides have already come in, uh, in, in large, large, inter, inter, in, 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 in large steps. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was like a real porky pig moment. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> My brain's not on fire. Uh, it's, Oh man, you had a big day yesterday. You you went to Malibu. Yeah, and... swam in the Pacific Ocean. First time very, ever, very, or what? First time ever swimming in in an ocean. I swam in the Caribbean or Caribbean or, or Gulf Coast, whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the day, nice. A lot different. Yeah, the Pacific is way more powerful, bigger waves. Uh, uh, but I got out there, man. I got out past where past the breaking point, and, and Did you pop the top just off. Treaded water for a bit. What's that? Did you pop your top off? Oh, you know I popped that top off. Yeah. You should get a tattoo. You should get a nice, a, a cool tattoo on your chest. So then the ladies <laughs> will, like, love you even more when you pop it off. You know what I mean? Yeah. What what kind of, what, what tattoo would you recommend, Drew? For you? Yeah, uh, for me. I think, I think you could get, like, a good, like, American traditional style tattoo. Um, big bold outlines, bright colors, lots of reds. Um, I don't know. What what do you think would would a cobra? Right? <laughs> right? Hey, yeah, you know. Escobra, that was my that was a tag for me for a while. Right. Yeah, I think you could Cameron, do it. Cameron, yeah. Or you could get like uh I don't know. I don't know. A duck. I like the duck better. Yeah. Ducks I think are, a duck, suit, duck suits me more. Ducks Maybe cool. just an open duck bill, like a duck that's about <laughs> to say something but with no face. Maybe. I, I don't know if that was just look something. Like. It was something to make people question. Right. right. What What is that? It's a duck bill. Why? That's I, up to the. That's up to you. You're, right. the, you're the consumer in here. I always wanted to get a tattoo on my butt of an ox. So it would be my butt ox. Butt ox. Your get, butt ox. Zing. Uh, that's, yeah, a good, yeah, that's a good, good one, isn't it? Like, I, think, I like it. I, I think I think it'd be good too. But uh, yeah, really, I think as far as like the the podcast, it's a permanent joke that you're willing to put on your I ass. Would, I would do it because it'd be funny. Yeah. It would always be funny. You'd have to put it inside the crease uh, so that when <laughs> you want to see my you want to see my butt, my ox on my butt, and then you have to actually spread. No, no, no. Uh, no. I mean, you're gonna hurt. get a good look. That'd be really painful, and no, I, I wouldn't so, want to do that. How would you? You could show it to him and go, "The hair is real." Yeah, right. Can you imagine like wiping? Oh, that would be ooh. for that for that first uh, yeah for that first couple of weeks. That'd be pretty bad. Um, so I, I have some questions for you. Uh, obviously, one of your goals of moving to California was to become a writer. Um, with all this striking now. So I don't know a lot about it outside of what I've, you know, just have heard some celebrities talk about it on, on, uh, Instagram. Um, you're obviously, or you're, you're not a part of the writing union. You're not a part no. of, you're not a part of SAG. So is there like a pushback of independent writing? I mean, you could probably, you definitely can still write. You just like well, what? Yeah, are... well, we'll see. I think we'll see an explosion of good writing that comes out at the after the strike is over because this is a time when writers are, are able to work on what they want to work on outside of the studios, outside of oversight, and make their projects uh, uh, on paper. I don't, you know, and it's like that's, but they're not. They can't. Sh- I don't think they can show anybody that or whatever. It's all based on um, 
I, like I don't know how how uh, um, union writers and contracts and things like that work, mm -hmm. but uh, there's also probably like going to be a mini surge of independent things that be, that are happening outside of the unions because those productions are still going on short films and plays and things like that. Um, so stand up. Uh, there's a stand up, yeah. Which uh, that's an interesting. I don't know if comedians are part of a writer of the writers guild or not. Some, I think some are. Some are even a part of SAG, but they can still do their stand up because it's not a studio isn't overseeing their stand up. You you're doing it yourself. You're like an independent contractor almost, and they're already yeah. they're meeting your demands if they want to have you at the show. Um, but I don't, I just get confused. Like I read a thing. It's just like, if you do this, you're a scab. If you do this, you're a scab, 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 scab. And it's like, okay, well, um, if you're working with, and it's, this is ignorance, I'm not trying to be a dick. Um, but if you're if like you as an independent writer or with me as an independent actor and we throw something up on YouTube, is that, am I going to be blacklisted because, um, I'm, I'm no, going to be labeled I a scab? I, I, I... I personally, I don't think so. Um, I don't, because that's, because uh, you're not, like, I, I think it comes down to money and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're not getting paid for it. But I've heard so many people say different things. I don't think anybody uh, that, at the level, like the people that I talk to, uh, they, some of them really know what they're talking about and they talk over my head and I don't necessarily grasp it but they're, mm -hmm. and they're coming at it from a different angle because uh, i know a lot of a lot, i know a lot more like iatsi people and uh, people that are in post-production mm -hmm. uh you know like production uh cast or production crew stuff and you know this affects them just as much oh, as for it sure. affects anybody else so i mean i'm um, with i'm with the writers like i get like writers really realistically should get paid almost the most because they're the ones, yes, there's writing and then there's performing the written word, right? Uh, you have to have good actors to to make what's written be believable, be good, you know, be powerful. But you need the writers to do that. <clears throat> so I'm, I'm, I'm with them. Well, it's, it's yeah, uh, uh, and I am too. It's, it, but a lot of it is like a lot of what people want to think about uh, with that is, is you think about your the big actors, you know, when you hear actors and SAG members mm. and things like that. And when you think about writers, you think more probably about showrunners and creators, which is a, a different. Right. I mean, it's still writing. It's still the writer's union and, and things like that. But those are the guys that make enough money where they can, where um, like, it looks like, Oh, why are these guys bitching about things? But it's like, it's the staff writers on shows Mm -hmm. that are, are getting screwed because like a show that used to run on cable that maybe would give them 20 weeks of work. Now they run those 20 episodes on at one time on Netflix or Amazon or whatever. So they only, they, they sit and write them in like two months or whatever, or two weeks or one month or And, and once they're all written, they're no longer needed. So they don't get paid anymore. So the, like the, there's like a lot of weird stuff with the, how streaming came around and who's getting the money and where it's going. Right. And honestly, I still don't understand. Like, cause the thing about streaming is, is we all pay for a subscription to a lot of different things, mm -hmm. whether we watch them or not, they're on, they're on Netflix or on Amazon, they're on Disney. Mm -hmm. uh, so like that number doesn't change. It's not quite like, um, you know, getting advertisements for your specific show time slot on cable or, or at a specific time, you know, the, the, the time slots where people are watching because no one's really watching cable the way that they used to. And then also when it comes to like movies and stuff, it's, it's, um, you're not, you don't necessarily see people like the, you don't see that money coming in for people specifically going to watch your movie because they're getting, they're watching your movie whilst having a su subscription that they paid for. Mm -hmm. So like there's money there, but it, it's I, to me, I it, like, there's a lot of in and outs to that. And I'm not a smart enough person to, to put that. I'm not business savvy. I'm not minded. I don't like my mind doesn't work that way. So it's like, uh, I, I get caught up on that and go like, well, you should be able to quantify how much money is coming into Netflix and where it's going. Uh, 
and and how much is left and what because they keep saying there's no money to give more to the writers and things like that it's like well i you know uh we should be able to quantify that somehow i don't know how uh they have all but we we, we live in an age of data tracking and uh and analytics where it's like you should uh something like stranger things that when it when you t- take the, that top top spot on the on the top 10 netflix watched list for so many weeks in a row or whatever it's like how does that not equate uh to something for those writers and those the people that helped create that show because uh they're clearly people are coming to netflix to watch that Mm -hmm. uh but then you when you if you look at it that way then the guy who wrote a really good show that gets buried in the algorithm he gets screwed if you're looking at it only based on that so it's like i that's where i get where i go i don't know what they're gonna do here there, there's smarter people uh, on both sides that are, are working on that uh, than me. So I don't, I don't, I don't pretend to have an insight into that. I, I listen when people want to talk about it because it's interesting. Uh, but I, I really don't. I'm ignorant as well. I, I have to plead ignorance here because that's where I, I kind of shifted into different things, and I'm kind of shifting again. Where it's like I, I'm, I'm working on some short film stuff because I have people that want to work on it. Uh, we have places to to shoot. Uh, we just I just want to I'm trying to find the right story for the locations and um, and then also uh, I you know I've been thinking about um, more comedy driven stuff as opposed to um, you know just just straight story stuff because I don't really write comedy when when it comes to uh, stories stories with comedy I I, I, that, I don't know how to put that into words. I'm trying so. Sure, you do. You did the we've we've done Christmas episodes. Well, I mean, those aren't written, but if I, they yeah, were, the the, when, those are real when, adventures. When you, when you have something, when you have someone to bounce things off of or play off of, mm-hmm. yes, I can do that. Uh, but when I'm sitting in a room by myself trying to write something funny into a script or into dialogue, I I don't know how to do it, and it's very difficult. I have a but I have an idea that uh I don't know if it's been done before. I mentioned on it on the on the short episode that I did by myself briefly. But like so there was these US congressional hearings by UFOs, right? Um they've they came out and like yes, they're they call them UAPs, but UFOs, we have them. We found biological matter that isn't human on it. Um, so you could, nobody said the word alien, but the alien. Yeah. So I was thinking like, they're going to take that biological matter. They're going to clone it. Right. So like in the next world war that, you know, it's like, you see the horizons, you know, we have the, we have all the, the people in the battlefields, or it could even be, this could be like a comic series too, where it's, you know, say it's America and we're going against another country. But when we look on the other side of the battlefield, instead of people, it's just an army of cloned aliens. And that's the new, the next um, warfare that we see in the world. Alien warfare based off of uh, a DNA that was found on a UFO. I think it'd be pretty fun to write. Yeah, I mean, you came up with that idea just now, so you're a scab. How does it feel? I usually pick scabs. It's been a nervous habit of mine. Well, leave leave I'm scars. You don't want to do that. You don't want yeah, to they, it's yeah. You got you leave scars, but chicks dig scars, especially scab star scars. You know, but how'd yeah. you get that one? Hey, you know, I stubbed my toe and I just kept on <laughs> pulling that bad boy off. I just kept picking. Yeah, it so. takes a real man to put shoes on after you pull that scab. <laughs> off. You should consider yourself lucky because I picked you. Hey, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, all right. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, yeah. yeah, but I don't know. I was just curious about it. I, like I said, I don't know much about this stuff, but. Uh... I, I, I don't keep up. Like, I should probably be, like, listening to some podcasts about that or, or on some feed or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just, I get my information from a few guys that I that I talk to, and I haven't seen them for a little bit. So I don't know what's going on. Right well, some now. of them could come on the podcast, right? You can podcast and talk about it, right? Uh, I think as long as you're not 
promoting from their what work? I heard, because I, as as long as you're not advertising for something that you were working on or are working on, um, unless it's Oppenheimer or Barbie. Yeah, I just, hey, you, know, you got to get those ones out. Those ones, they, they you know, you got to get them out. Uh, but if, if something's written and done, like they were able to do it in, in any post-production stuff, because that union wasn't on strike. So, mm-hmm. uh, but any reshoots or things like that, I don't know when they finished those two movies, but they probably were trying to get them in under the wire. Mm-hmm. Uh, talk for talk for a minute, man. I'm sorry. This chair, I swear. The chair? The yeah. chair is the new... Uh... Just what? Not not enough back support. You're getting old from all that climbing. Your your body is just wrecked. Um, no, I think it's I think it's yeah. I think it's designed to make you have to go to the bathroom. Oh, you got to go to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. Are you bringing me in the bathroom? Oh, you muted it. Thing. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, here's the play by play. All right, Robert uh, is unzipping his pants. Just kidding. I can't see any of that. I just see the uh, the overlight the the overhead light. That he has uh, uh, going on. Well, one thing about, uh, uh, you know, it shows that he's hydrated. And I know what you think. Another ad about hydration. That's not coming this time because I still don't have answers. Working on them, though. Been talking about been talking about it with, with people. So we'll see how it goes. Um, fun fact. Um, the average human, like, if you want to have, like, a healthy or, like, measure your health a little bit, um, 22 seconds is the average urination time that you should be having. If you go longer than that, you've held it for too long. And if you go shorter than that, well, you're going too often, which could lead to uh, bladder issues, could lead to, uh, um, you know, when you're old and you're going to the bathroom every 10 minutes, it could lead to that. So 22 seconds is the desired length of urination. That's uh, that is a fact. I read that. It's good to know. Did we talk about that once? I don't know. Was yours 22 seconds? I wasn't counting, but it seemed long. But I think that's because I was listening to you fill the gap. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you got you to gotta get this thing over with. He's floundering. <laughs> He's talking about PFACs. That's a, that is a fact. I mean, another another thing to determine your health. I'm all about trying to help you be healthier. Um, Rob, here's here's an idea. Should we? Should you and I make a, a Google... Um, documents in which it's a vision board for the podcast and then we can post like ideas that we have or topics we'd like to discuss and then goals yeah yeah we could do that yeah i think uh, so what what would one of your goals be more i would like to do some more in-depth strange brews oh okay i like that um, um which like that and that can come come like count like go across a lot of platforms or whatever mm-hmm. uh like because i i know that this trial just wrapped up about the woman that like uh, uh skinned a guy with a butter knife did you hear about this in wisconsin she dismembered her significant other and she was found guilty i don't know the the details of the case but we can definitely break butter that down knife. You, you, yeah used a butter knife that's what i uh, really uh, that's yeah, no, I don't. I don't know much more than that. I know that she uh, she didn't do herself any favors in the courtroom, uh, or whatever. But it's like that's something that is like that's another Wisconsin killer that just chose a really like we Crazy maybe way. don't have the the worst killers or whatever, but we have some some very ingenuitive uh, killers that do weird things. And does like coming out of Wisconsin, depending on like the brand, does does the brand of the butter knife go like, hey, like we're it's we're pretty good. We have a good. It was, yeah, it was a Dixie. It was a Dixie <laughs> plastic butter knife, and they're like, "You." Could, it's like like the uh, remember the uh, those the deodorant strong enough for a woman, but uh, or strong enough for a man, but but uh, but for a woman or whatever, it's uh, you know strong enough to skin your lover, but used for butter. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like yeah. you know. It's, I I I think that hopefully hopefully I, they're I'd taking buy that. that I'd buy that plastic knife. Mm. I'll tell you what. Instead of like as seen on TV, like as seen in this murder trial. Yeah. You know, yeah. As seen on court TV. <laughs> yeah. Then no, that's definitely a story we can, we can look into. Um, but you know, so, like stuff like that, the, the, the site, the stuff that's going on with the UFOs or the UPOs or whatever the heck they call them. Um, UAPs. Uh, UAPs. Uh, the, also, you know, there's just, uh, that just gives us something to, research and and kind of look into it's like but time is always a factor for that stuff so like we 
we'd almost have like, you know, in my opinion, we should be setting those goals. If we're going to do like one a month, like we used to mm-hmm. you set the topic a month in advance so that we don't have to do all the research in a week. Mm-hmm. And, and then we come in and we're like, ah, I don't know what I'm talking about. It's a good idea. I'll set that up. I'll get that. I'll get but, that. So, your, your computer. Uh, yeah, I, you know, like I, I like that, that set, you know, like that was, that kind of thing was was good we have i mean we had a lot of segments in the past that we did one time and we we're like this is gonna be a segment uh, uh and and they went away but they were probably yeah. not bad ideas i don't know yeah we haven't done a versus in a long time um I, i've been trying to think of some that we can yeah we you, can it's hard it's hard it's like, like i don't want to like make i want it to be organic where we'll, we actually like, yeah, like have the, the Pepsi opinion and coke with the legitimate versus that was something that we actually right. you know right right um, but eh, we'll figure it out. We'll brainstorm it a little bit. Um, um, Robin... yeah, that's where, again, as I do all the time, I will, I will say, I mean, there's people we have, we see that this stuff is downloaded and listened to by someone, mm-hmm. uh, uh, type in somewhere. I'm sure Drew will get it. Uh, uh if you have, if you have a, and uh, something you, you want us to do a versus on, we'll see if, but just send it out there and maybe we are on the opposite sides of that, that those fences, cause uh, we have them, but we might not be thinking about them for sure. Rob, you drank uh, Malibu Brewing Company's Canyon Rosé. Did you enjoy it? Is it good? Would you drink it again? Uh, yeah, it's good. I, I I don't think I drink a lot of these. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like the getting getting drunk on these would, uh, or even like buzzed on them would create more stomach distortion than <laughs> mental sure. buzz buzzedness. Like it, it's just it's very sweet, uh, but it's a good like crisp refreshing beer if you're just chilling by the pool or, or mm-hmm. chilling on a, you know it's like on a, on a hot day or whatever or maybe if you want if you want a beer but you but you also like that rosé flavor i mean it it, it well, does it is really blended well it's not bad awesome i had um earlier the mobcraft uh crush orange creamsicle I, mean, I would drink it again i only had the one can but I, I would drink it again. It was pretty good. Again, same thing. Like you can't have like this isn't like a this is a party all day beverage. This is um, I'm I'm winding down or I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying the scene. I'm enjoying the environment and the company, and I'm sipping this thing, just living life. And then uh, I don't think uh, yeah I, I don't think people are drinking craft beers to get fucked up. Do you think no. that are there people out there doing that? Maybe um, probably not. Um, I think sometimes Not it happens. Much, it happens sure. because you're like in good company. You know what I mean? Yeah, it happens on accident. But even still, like I don't see too many people get sloppy. Like mm-hmm. uh, you might get loose. You get a little loose lip. You get a little sure. little laughy, a little little upbeat, a little little emboldened. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you're not get like. These beers, I don't think. At least this one that I drink, I don't think you could get to that point. Even I think you would get. Um, you would, unless you really like that sweeter, crisp, like uh, uh, lighter lager beer, yeah. Uh, you, then maybe you could drink this quickly and 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 kind of and go through it, and get to that. But it's not high, you know, on the on the ABVs. It's not like you know. So it's like it's a good beer to just if you want to have a beer or wine or something, and, and uh, that's lighter than beer, maybe, mm. uh, uh, and sit and sip or whatever. It's it's good for that. Yeah. Follow us on all the the socials. We're on Threads now, um, the 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 Twitter of Instagram. We're on Instagram. We're on X, not Twitter anymore. It's called X. Um, all that I don't know all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. All right. Till next time. Oh, do we want to what? throw in there real quick? Uh, Garth Brooks. This whole Garth Brooks controversy. <laughs> the controversy of Garth Brooks. Garth Brooks uh, blocked us on Instagram because I there's a podcast I listen to called Your Mom's House. Tom Segura and his wife, uh, comedian Tom Segura, his comedian wife, um, Christina P. They have had this um, theory that Garth Brooks is a serial killer. Because if you look at like his tour schedule, a lot of times people go missing. It's strange, bro. Please, please, can we do that for a strange brew? That sounds so fun fucking awesome i gotta get more ev- i, I want to perpetuate that i want to find out <laughs> if that's true i gotta get more evidence of it but pr- pr- like essentially what happened was all the fans of this podcast your mom's house would put like your mom's house references in the comments of ev- like and it was like 90 percent 
your mom's house fans and the one garth brooks fan is like what are you talking about where are the bodies like what does that mean um and i participated in that because one it's funny uh two i was like hope maybe somebody could stumble on the podcast and you know we could pick up some people that way too um and garth brooks after a while blocked us true fact like yeah he, he blocked us he also blocked tom segura so Hey, well, so we're in an overlapping Venn diagram of Tom Segura. That's not <laughs> a bad not, place. To I'll be. take that. I'd and, rather be there than in an overlap of Garth Brooks fans. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess. Garth Brooks has friends. I thought and we Lowe's. talked about Garth Brooks recently on a Tunes and Brews, like uh, or something. I thought Maybe. we talked about how how Garth Brooks was like a watered down country. Yeah. Uh, uh, that that ushered in Shania Twain and pop country or whatever. Yeah, uh, and I was like, God, I I hope that's why he blocked us. That would be amazing. That would be listens. great. He just, uh-huh. he just goes around and listens. Like he he does like an AI search of the like anytime my name is is said, I gotta hear what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah, but he um he blocked us or his team blocked us. Um, he does have an alter ego called Chris Gaines that he tried to do like back in the day, like release this album under like this like angsty country person named Chris Gaines. And I don't think it was a big success, but I guess he's like going to do more. He's going to, he's going to do it more. The dude is a psycho. If you watch like his Instagram videos, like you can, there's nothing in those eyes. And he's just like, he's so removed from reality because he's reached this level of stardom that uh, should never be reached. He just doesn't know what, what real life is. And he's also potentially a serial killer. Yeah. I I mean, I I know this Uh, people that have alter egos, Serial killers have that. He's got friends in low places, about about six feet six feet low. Yeah, it's six feet under. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, so. Hey, I think the yeah we we're already putting together facts, <laughs> hard facts. Right, I think so. Uh, uh, Garth Brooks blocked us, which uh, you know. I, that's our T-shirt too. That, <laughs> that we should have that on. Use of proof. Garth I'm, Brooks blocked us. I could, I could, I could do that. I could make that one up. But uh, so look on T Public for for the Garth Brooks shirt uh, coming in this in the next week. Um, I love it. All right, that's it. All right. Pew, pew, audio. Goodbye, everyone.